Hey everybody, it's been another crazy year in brain computer interface technologies for 2022. I've got a list of awards that I want to give out to devices that were the best in each category. We're going to give out awards for categories of focus, sports training, meditation, mainstream advancement, neuromarketing, augmented and virtual reality development, direct stimulation of the brain, programming, and sleep. We'll also dive into some newcomers that are coming for 2023 to keep an eye on, as well as high-end tech developments that should influence the niche moving forward over the next couple of years. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Cody Rall, your medical doctor confidant. This is Tech for Psych, where we expand minds through neurotechnology. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit subscribe so it helps the channel with the YouTube algorithm, and let's get into it. Now, which device do you think I'll give the award to for focus? I mean, this is obviously a very important category. I'm thinking specifically of professionals that want to improve their ability to concentrate throughout the workday. There was one device in particular that really helped me as I was transitioning out of the military and had a lot of anxiety about starting a new business. I had a friend pass away and my mind was just all over the place. It was really difficult to concentrate during the day. So I started training with this device every day and noticed these benefits that I really wanted to communicate here on the channel. And that device is Mendy. So I told this story on Tech for Psych before, but as I was transitioning into my entrepreneurial life, I started using Mendy every morning to help stabilize my focus. I did make a tutorial video where I went over my strategy for using Mendy. Basically, Mendy has this software program where as you increase blood flow to your frontal lobe, a ball goes up on the screen. So every time the ball went up on the screen, I allowed myself to feel happy about it. We know when we feel excited, it releases dopamine, which reinforces the pathways that originally made the ball go up in the first place, which was increased blood flow to the brain. After a couple of weeks, I noticed this phenomenon that I call the Mendy pull effect, where you feel like your attention is being pulled in whatever direction you put it in. You can use this for meditation, you can use it for getting into flow state for exercise, and for getting into the rhythm of working for the day. From a nerdy standpoint, I love this device because it uses functional near-infrared spectroscopy. Basically, it shines red light through your scalp and your skull to measure how much blood flow is going to your frontal lobe. This is really the only device that I'm aware of on the market that consumers can buy to use this technology for neurofeedback purposes. For $350, if you're trying to improve your focus, I highly encourage you to try it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Now for our second category, there's a lot of athletes out there that would like to improve their mental performance, especially during times of intense stress. I'm thinking of high paced situations that require a lot of focus, which is most sports, hockey, football, but even things like race car driving. This past summer, I was hiking in Zion National Park, which is notorious for having people die on it almost every year from falls. And when I got up there, I realized why. I was looking around and I got dizzy and disoriented. And I needed to remind myself to breathe. And then I realized one of the reasons that people fall up there is that they forget to breathe and then they lose their focus. And then I had an epiphany. That's exactly what Focus Calm trains you to do. I really like Focus Calm for sports training because it trains you to remain calm in intense situations. One of the great things about this device is that you don't have to be hardcore into neurofeedback to get benefits. The exercises are more gamified than most of the other devices I've reviewed on this channel and very straightforward. There's memory games, there's executive function games, there's reaction time games. All of these are designed to help you function better in stressful situations. I think this device is good for people that are not super into meditation or minute energy changes within their body. It's probably better for children, elderly, and athletes that aren't so into biofeedback and just want something to train their brain and be straightforward about it. They have this cool dashboard set up where coaches can track their athletes over time. They also have this academic training program called Neuromaker for students that are interested in going into the brain computer interface field. And this will be definitely something that I'll be covering on the channel in the near future. And for Focus Calm at $350 with a lifetime subscription, it matches up nicely with Mendy and is a good choice. Our next category is meditation. Which device do you think that I'll pick for meditation? Is it the Mendy? Is it the Focus Calm? Nope. It's the Muse headband, and I'm sure a lot of you probably predicted that. Muse continues to be the front runner in excellent 
software and hardware to use for neurofeedback meditation experiences. They continue to add meditation experiences to their app, refine their machine learning and AI software for the neurofeedback, and their new Muse S Gen 2 has improved sensor technology, Bluetooth communication, and have fixed a lot of issues that people were complaining about over the years, which was Bluetooth connection problems as well as the sensors breaking down. On many occasions, I am using the Muse headband every morning. I still prefer to use it to stabilize my focus before going on to more energetic meditations after my Muse session and I'm still using the Muse headband every day with my clients through the brain circuit training program through another company that has partnered with Muse called MindLift that provides clinical software for neurofeedback professionals to deliver neurofeedback to their clients. I can do brain mapping with my clients through sequential quantitative EEG. I can see how their brain reacts to different neurofeedback protocols that I set and I can even customize the software to match my virtual clinic. There's also a third party app that's really popular called Mind Monitor where you can do some self-research. For about $15 on the App Store, you can download this app and take a look at what your brainwaves are doing from day to day and run little experiments on yourself. So for continued improvement, great third-party apps, and just an overall awesome experience, Muse is definitely still out ahead for meditation. The Muse headbands run from $250 for the Muse 2 up to about $340 for the Muse S Gen 2 with an annual subscription. So there's a range of prices there for some awesome devices. In a new category that I'm doing this year, I'm calling Mainstream Advancement, and I'm giving that award to Nextmind. Nextmind got bought by Snapchat this year, which is the first time I've seen a major tech company by one of these neurotechnology companies, which is really exciting because it made a splash in the mainstream media. People start seeing these technologies as more than just toys with real world applications that can be used by companies to improve their suite of products. It was revealed that Snapchat is looking at using Nextmind to improve its augmented reality glasses. So it'll be really interesting to see how they incorporate that technology into AR glasses or whatever product they're working on. If you recall, Nextmind can tell where you are looking on a screen by analyzing the EEG brain waves in your occipital lobe on the back of your head, which is the area of the brain that analyzes visual information. Developers are able to put a little flickering tag on the screen that Nextmind can detect, and it is rumored that this technology could eventually work with shapes. So for the very interesting category of neuromarketing, I'm giving that award to Emotive. And some of you might be curious and surprised to hear me talking about Emotive. I haven't reviewed very many of their devices on this channel for a while, but I got contacted by a marketing agency in LA that was interested about this technology. And we created a project together that went really well. And now I'm really excited about neuromarketing again. So in development of this project, I got to read some scientific papers and work with the software. They had the new Epoch X out, which is a third generation EEG device that has 14 channels and this awesome software called Emotive Pro. So basically they had people come in and do very rigorous neuroscience experiments. They would do tasks that were easy, medium, and hard difficulty. Then they would validate the EEG signals through reaction time and task accuracy to get different measures like engagement, excitement, relaxation, frustration, interest. To get these, they basically took all the test subjects EEG data, fed it into machine learning algorithms, and then they were able to further validate it through their system called Emotive Labs, where people can log on if they have a device and do different neuroscience experiments as a citizen scientist to help them further refine their protocols. So at the conference, we had attendees break into different groups and pick TikTok videos that they thought would spike the engagement score the most on a customer avatar that we had there live in the room, hooked up to the Emotive Epoch system. And when we tested the videos, it worked really well and it was really fun. And I would say the videos really lined up with how engaging things were. If there was a lot of suspense or surprise, it would really draw the audience members in and the engagement score would go up. I did a lot of independent testing with this software and I'm really excited to use it more. I'll probably make some reaction videos in which I'm watching content showing how these algorithms change with time. At $849, the Epoch X is more of a business-to-business -business neuroscience research tool than something an average consumer would buy. But I think it has the potential to turn the marketing world on its head with neuromarketing AI algorithms. If you're interested in me coming in person to run this neuromarketing workshop for your organization, email me at hello at or fill out a contact request form on my website. 
In the area of augmented and virtual reality development through Brain Computer Interface, I have to give this to Galea. This is an open BCI project that has gotten a lot of press this year, and it's very exciting to see their device come to fruition. They've got eye tracking, biometrics, EEG, everything that you would need for biometric data to help enrich an AR VR experience. Now at $22,000, you're probably not gonna find a Galea collecting dust in your friend's closet anytime soon, but they're working with major video game companies like Valve, as well as very high-end virtual reality goggle development companies like Varjo. And I can't wait to see what Galea is able to produce by working with these high-end companies in the world of BCI through video games. Our next category, stimulation, is something that I want to do more of coming up next year on the channel. I haven't really found a direct electrical stimulation device that I really like. I have been try and think filzing patches which do wake you up but there's still that weird electrical prickliness that turns people off i mean my wife felt like an animal was clawing on her neck she told me so that being said i'm still a big fan of the neo rhythm that uses pulsed electromagnetic frequencies that are different than direct electrical stimulations because you don't even feel the electrical stimulation part on your skin it just influences your brain waves through magnetic pulses. I like to use it with meditation, so I still really like the Neo Rhythm if you're looking for something that does direct stimulation of the brain. There's different settings to improve your focus, your relaxation, help you sleep better. It's worth a try if you're looking for something that does direct stimulation. For programmers, I'm still recommending the Neurosity Crown. They have an awesome device here with an onboard computing unit, communication through Wi-Fi, data encryption, as well as a very lively uh, GitHub community for people that are looking to program brain-computer interface devices to help them control like a little race car or a mouse cursor on the screen. If you are a programmer and really trying to develop brain-computer interface technologies, that's where to look. Uh, I should also mention that Neurosity is working with Divergence, which is a company that offers online neurofeedback for clinicians and therapists, and they're making great strides in improving their software, which is an option to consider if you wanna try something other than MindLift. For sleep, I think many of you will be happy to see the return of the Dream Headband back to the market this year. They went underground for a couple of years to redesign their business model, and now they are back offering treatment for insomnia. They've partnered with several major healthcare insurance companies to make it possible to pay for this sleep tracking and treatment through your health insurance. In my opinion, this is actually an important advancement that's happening with these wearables because for medical uses, insurance companies really should be picking up the tabs, especially with a headband like the Dream Headband that has gold standard polysomography capabilities and is a much better option to track sleep habits at home rather than having to go into some lab where your sleep habits are gonna be messed up anyways, you can be hooked up to a bunch of wires. I mean, how do they expect to get good sleep data from traditional polysomography anyway? This is the way it should be done. Insurance companies should be picking up the tab. And this is really going to make the general population more aware of what's happening in this space, what resources are available, and use them to not only create brain-computer interface technologies, but treat medical conditions. As far as newcomers for 2023, I'm really excited about the Sensei headband. I've spoke personally to the CEO and founder of that company. There's a couple of things that haven't been done before in this wearable space. They have a photobiomodulation component where they're using near-infrared light to stimulate your neurons into higher activity. There's the EEG, there's the neurofeedback, but there's also trackers to include ERPs, evoke related potentials, which really hasn't been done in this space and can be used to track reaction times as well as other biomarkers to let us know how your brain is functioning as you go through the training protocol. As for high-end advancement in the field, we've got some really exciting things happening over the next couple of years. Open Water has unveiled their wearable, which uses a combination of ultrasound and near-infrared light to produce 3D mapping and tracking of blood flow. In order to bootstrap their company into profitability, they've chosen to detect stroke in stroke victims that are in an ambulance headed to the hospital. This could be an extremely important diagnostic tool, saving many lives and reducing morbidity in people that have had stroke by getting them the correct treatment that much faster. In Kernel, they've started to use the Kernel flow to map connectivity patterns in relation to psychedelic treatment. Brian Johnson posted his own own connectome before 
during and after ketamine treatment, which is really exciting and paves the way for how we should be tracking out brain activity for mental health treatments in the near future. And I definitely have to mention advancements in implantable BCI technologies because the information that we gleaned from that will definitely percolate into the wearable field as well. Synchron had their first patients where they implanted their device through the jugular vein and into an area that can detect brain signals. This will help people with paraplegia, control robotic arms, cursors on a computer screen, and even speech synthesis. And now I'll announce the device where you get the most value for the lowest price. I have to give it to the Muse 2. I think that the Muse 2 at $250 is cheaper than a lot of the other devices that I've reviewed here on this review video. And you have access to all the software that the Muse S has access to except the sleep parameters. So you have MindLift, you have Mind Monitor, and the regular Muse app. I just think if you're on a tight budget and you really want to get one of these devices, you can't go wrong with the Muse 2. Thanks so much for sticking to the end. If you want to go more in depth on any one of these devices, I've got a list of different review videos that I've made in the description of this video. And there's also a affiliate links. If you want to make a purchase, please do so through that link. It helps support the channel so we can continue bringing you information on this cutting edge field. I appreciate the viewership and I'll see you on the next one.